Hello everyone, um, excuse the weird <laughs> intro, I was literally just about to pack up my room um, and I realised I didn't film an intro, so hello, welcome to my channel, sorry I haven't filmed an intro but I just wanted to quickly explain what I was doing, um, even though it's pretty self explanatory but I just wanted to come on here and say hello and yeah, so basically this video is a recreation of my wedding makeup. So my bridal makeup, I recreated it today just because I asked on Instagram if you wanted to see it and a lot of you said yes. So it feels really weird having the same makeup on. I just put a veil on as well. It was very weird. So I literally done exactly the same as what I done on my wedding day. So I showed you all the products that I used. <coughs> My voice just broke. So I showed you all of the products that I used, how I used them, and yeah, so I went for quite a dramatic look, as you can tell. But hopefully you find this helpful. I watched so many um, bridal makeup routines. Routines? I watched so many bridal um, makeup tutorials on YouTube. Although that I'm a makeup artist, I just wanted to look at some ideas so hopefully um, anyone who's watching who's getting married you find this video helpful so anyways I'm gonna stop rambling I'm gonna get straight on to the tutorial because it is a long one again I hope you like the look don't forget to subscribe if you are new here please give this video a thumbs up if you did like it as well and leave me um, some comments down below let me know what you want to see next so yeah I hope you enjoy it and you'll see me in my next one yeah. Bye. primer is a must if you're getting married depending on whether you want one that is going to blur your pores and fine lines or if you want one that's going to be really glowy and hydrating or one that's really mattifying so it all depends on your skin type if you go to a beauty counter um i'm sure they would be able to help you and figure out which one is best for your skin so the next thing i did was i applied a very light layer of foundation all over my skin um, because I've mentioned this before where I always like to apply a little bit of foundation before I go in with my eyeshadow or before I do my eyebrows. Me personally I like to kind of start off with a kind of clean base and I take it down because I had a dress on that was um, boob tube. I lightly took it down just so it was all one colour. But the next thing I done was my brows, so I always like to do my brows before my eyeshadow just because, as everyone says, it really frames the face and I kind of get a guideline of like where to take my eyeshadow and what direction, that kind of thing. And I used a brow product that I always use and I know that it works for my brows, I know that it lasts fine. So just always go in with products that you know work for your skin type or your kind of brow just because you don't want to try new products if you are going to try new products just make sure that you practice it beforehand <clears throat> so the product that I go in with is Coquette eyeshadow by MAC this is a really nice cool tone brown it's not all it's almost on like the khaki side it's perfect for anyone who has um, really ashy cool tone brows um, and I use that on a oh, an angled brush. In terms of um, like very defined on the top and bottom, I kind of went quite light on the top. So I just kept on brushing it through. So when you brush it through, it just ensures that you kind of pick up any excess product and it's not too harsh. I do that by um, like wetting my brush, I spray it with a little bit of Fix Plus. I dab it on both sides and with quite a firm hand I just drag it straight across and you can see that just makes it just a little bit more defined. Okay so now that I've done my brows I will go in with my MAC Studio Finish Concealer in the shade NC20. And on a MAC 242 brush, I coat both sides of the brush. And I will use the very end of the brush because it's nice and kind of rounded and very defined. I find this really hard to talk when I do this. But you just need to take your time, but I literally trace right underneath the 
the brow. Just very slowly. And then at the front, I just kind of feathered it back and forth because I didn't want that really defined look at the front. I wanted it to be a little bit more natural looking. Okay, so before my eyeshadow, also just want to quickly say about my lashes. There's about one left on this eye and about, I don't know, five left on this eye. So please excuse the lash situation, but I'm just letting them fall out. So yeah, please ignore that. Anyways, so um, before my eyeshadow, I went in with the MAC um, 24 hour extended eye base. This is absolutely incredible, incredible. <laughs> it is like bulletproof for your eyeshadow. I just find my eyeshadow is still as intense and as blended when using that, whereas when I don't use that, my eyeshadows, you know, they're okay, they do last, but they don't last half as long. Um, as you saw, I just went in with my concealer and I went over that primer, so I still use concealer on, I still use concealer on my eyelids, more so because that primer is see-through, so I like to go in with the concealer to make my eyelids nice and even. And then before that creases, I will go in with the powder that I use and I will dab that all over my eyelid just to ensure everything is really really sandwiched in and I know that my eyeshadows are gonna last but yeah this is just my way of doing it everyone's way of doing make makeup is different so just do whatever works for you. And I also, the reason why I do use a primer is because I actually used my um, Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette and I find the colours are absolutely amazing in there, but I don't know if any, any of you have noticed, but they just don't last. Um, they do fade quite a bit. So when you have eyeshadows like that who that aren't as high quality, um, say is like MAC, they don't last as long. So by using a primer, you're just ensuring that it's gonna last as long as possible. So yeah, like I said, I went in with my Jaclyn Hill palette and a mixture of MAC eyeshadows. So the first eyeshadow that I went in with, now this palette is absolutely disgusting because I use it all the time, but I went in with this first color here. So it's a really, really nice neutral, well, it's like, it's like a neutral warm brown and it's a really nice crease colour to add a tiny bit of definition, a little bit of warmth without being too orange. Because the thing with my makeup, obviously you all know that I absolutely love orange eyeshadow and I always go in with those kind of tones. So when you're a bride, the thing with your makeup, you want to look like yourself and you want to be comfortable. You want to do the kind of colours that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, just a little bit more amped up. The only thing going in with like orange tones against a white dress, um, it just looks very, very harsh, just too much. Um, and as I was saying earlier, you know, trends change and I didn't want to look back at my pictures and be like, what the fuck? Why was I wearing orange eyeshadow? So I kind of, I've gone for more of a like toned down version, not a toned down version because I did go quite dramatic, but in terms of like the colours, I didn't go as warm. I went with warm tones, I just didn't go orangey. Because as much as I love orange, I wanted to be able to look back at it and still love my makeup. And don't get me wrong, I still went in with a little bit of orange, <laughs> just a little bit later on. So by going in with this shade, I just found that it helped tone down the warmer colour that I went in um, after this. And then, of course, it would not be my bridal makeup if I didn't go in with my baby. <laughs> so I went in with a tiny weeny bit of Rule by MAC. And when I say a tiny bit, I mean a tiny bit. I literally really lightly ran it on the edges of that first Morphe colour just to warm it up slightly but I didn't want to go in with this shade first because 
if you put like this kind of color or like an orange on as your transition shade because it's against your natural skin it just looks way more orange on its own okay so the next eyeshadow i went in with was um brown script by mac which is a really really nice rich warm tone of brown so that's another reason why i didn't want to go in with like an orange shade before just because when you're using more of a red tone brown and orange together it can look very very like fiery and very rich and just too orange which is what i didn't want so that's why i used more of a neutral tone before because i still wanted my warm tones i just didn't want it to be too orangey like i said so i used that on the same brush as before and i start to work that into the outer corner of my eye so as you can see i'm kind of wiggling it on the outer corner and then once i've got the color where i want it i start to work it through my crease i just think you should go in with any colors that you know complement your skin tone or you know that work with your eye color or like I said before, colours that you know you love just because you know that you're going to be comfortable and you're going to feel yourself. So whatever's left on my brush, I start to run that through the crease and I always do it when my eye is open. So that way I know exactly where my eyeshadow is going to be when my eye is open. Again, I go back in with another layer and I think I repeated that bit quite a few times because I just wanted it to be really nice and intense. And I knew I wanted to go reasonably smoky with my wedding makeup. So I'm just gonna repeat that step a couple times. So starting at the corner and bringing it through my crease and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other eye. So when I want to... So when I want to intensify the color, I take my brush and I use more, more, why can't I speak? So when I want to intensify the color a little bit more, what I do, I take my brush on its side and I wiggle it into the eyeshadow again on its side and I literally tap it. So wherever you first put your color, that's where it's going to be most intense. So I just go in back in with that first color from the Jaclyn Hill palette and I run it over my edges once more. This is like why my eyeshadow took so long because I just, I repeated those steps like probably like five times. But yeah, the next color I went in with was this shade here which is called I'm Into It by MAC. So I've done the exact same thing by dabbing it on the outer part. I'm gonna go back in with that brown script and just merge the two colours together and just blend out any harsh lines so right the way around the edges so on the lid the edge of the eye as well make sure you go to like a professional because they're, they're probably going to know exactly what suits your skin tone what suits your colouring but they also go off of what you feel comfortable with most makeup artists who are, you know, trained, they will um, give you like a consultation. They'll ensure that they know what you like, what you're used to, how much makeup you're used to wearing, what colours you like, what colour scheme your wedding is. You know, people take that into consideration as well. So if you go to a professional, that's going to help massively. If you're doing your own makeup, then just practice. Just try out new things. Once you've got your colours down, then just keep practicing it until you're happy with it. And then for the um, lid colour, I went in with um, Naked Pigment. Is this Naked? Yeah, Naked Pigment by MAC. So I went in, like I said, with Naked Pigment. And I just dabbed that onto the inner part of my lid. So I started off at the inner corner. And then once I've got the colour kind of the most intense in the inner corner, I then patted it across. Now that we've got the lid colour and the crease colour, and don't forget that you can, if you feel like you're unsure with how intense to go or how dark to go, you can always add more later on. So make sure you give yourself enough time 
to go back to your makeup when everything is finished because you might want to add a little bit more eyeshadow on the lash line because once you've got your lashes on everything looks a lot more intense anyway or you might find your eyeshadow isn't high enough and you just want to bring it up a little bit higher than the lashes so just that's the biggest thing make sure you have loads of time I gave myself like four hours to do my makeup because one I knew I was really fussy and two I just knew that I wanted to really perfect it and take my time and go back afterwards. So the next thing I did was I went in with liner. So the eyeliner I used was the Liquid Last by MAC. This is so, so waterproof. If you put it on your hand, it does not budge. And I didn't do a wing or anything too dramatic. And I feel like eyeliner is quite important, especially for photos, because it just really defines your eye. It just makes it stand out that little bit more, gives more shape to your eye. And if you're wearing false lashes, it helps to kind of hide the seam that little bit more. But what you can also do is go in with a little bit of black eyeshadow or brown, like a dark brown if you're using brown eyeliner. And on a very um, like kind of stumpy definer brush, this is a 212 brush by MAC. And what you can do is just press that over the edges of your liner and one this gives obviously if you feel like you're a little bit shaky or if your eyeliner isn't very um, like smooth if you go over with liner it just softens the edges slightly so I didn't want to go in with a wing and I don't really like it where your eyeliner just stops at a point and there's nothing there. So this kind of blends it into the eyeshadow. Cool, so if you see the difference between that eye, so that eye has the um, smoky liner and that eye without, I just feel like it intensifies it a little bit more, but it's totally up to you. I just felt like it just worked for the kind of look that I wanted to go for. I didn't want it to be too dark through the crease so I felt like going smoky across the lash line gave it that effect without being too heavy in the crease area. Okay so at this point I was feeling very nervous and I knocked back about two glasses of Prosecco just to take the edge away and Alicia gave me some of her calming drops as well um, and that definitely helped um, and I was a little bit more you know calm. But I had to get um, Layla to put on my lashes just because, like I said, my hands were shaking like crazy. I actually had um, eyelash extensions um, put in. Um, I always knew I wanted to wear a strip lash, but I just found my lashes or my eye shape just don't handle um, strip lashes very well. And I found if I had eyelash extensions on, it actually created like a little bit of a base for the eyelash strips to kind of sit on top of. Um, it just made them sit on a lot nicer and it just gave that like extra oomph. For the lashes that I wore, um, the style Gracie's, um, these are Boss Lashes by The Face Boss, um, which is my friend Meg's, it's her own brand. So I'll link the um, website down below. She does some really, really nice styles. So now that we have finished the majority of the eyes, I'm gonna go um, in with my foundation now. So I'm just gonna um, top up my skin now and I'm just gonna make it look really nice and even. And the foundation that I wore was Giorgio Armani by Luminous Silk. And I mixed a little bit of the MAC um, Studio Fix Fluid in with it. And make sure as well that your foundation first, photograph, <laughs> you want to make sure that your foundation photographs um, well as well so make sure you take a couple photos wearing your foundation or wearing all of your products together just because you don't want any flashback and when I say flashback I mean if someone's going to be um, taking flash photos of you with their flash on obviously then you don't want to get a white cast um, so the main thing that I normally look for in products is um, anything that has silica in will normally flash back. So if you see any of your highlighting powders, in terms of like highlighting powders like for under eyes or any concealers and foundation and setting powders, if they have silica in, 
then they most likely will flash back and cause a white car. So little trick is if you're shopping for makeup and you want to find a powder that does not flash back, what I normally do is I put a little bit of powder on my arm and I take a photo with my phone um, with flash on and you can normally see um, a white cast. If it's very, very faint, then don't worry too much because unless you're going to really, really bake your face, you're not going to use a ton of powder. It all depends on how much you use. So I just put a little bit of under eye concealer on and I used my Pro Long Eye Concealer because I know it lasts ages on me. I know it doesn't flash back. The powder that I used was the um, La Mer powder, which is a little bit pricey, but it, it's literally the best powder I have ever used. It's very, very finely milled. It doesn't make you look powdery. It photographs really nicely, so I did check to see if it photographed, it photographed okay. Okay, so for the under eyes, I kind of repeated exactly what I done on, well, through the crease. So I went in with a little bit of the orange. Then I went back in with the shade um, Brown Script. So just before I go in with my neck shade, um, on the actual day I did use um, Costa Riche eyeliner by MAC, but I borrowed my friend so I don't have that with me, but I'm going to use something similar. Um, this is a lip pencil, so use with, <laughs> use with precaution, but um, I know that it works okay for my eyes, so if you're going to use this, make sure you try it first. It's a really nice, rich, warm tone of brown. Whatever you feel comfortable with, if you want a really natural look where it really opens up your eye, you can use nude. If you want something a little bit softer, then use brown. Um, and I also love using warm tone brown eyeliners because it really complements blue or green eyes. So next I'm going to press into the lash line. So next, um, using that I'm Into It shade again and a flat definer brush, I'm going to press that into my lash line and work it into the eyeliner that I just applied just to again add a little bit more definition and add that burgundy shade to tie in with the crease colour. And I'm also going to press that inside the eye to kind of set the eyeliner down so it lasts a little bit longer. Okay, so for my um, face products, as in like my bronzer and blush, I went in with products that I always use that I know works for me. So I went in with bronzer, which was um, mineralized skin finish in dark deepest because it's a really nice like brown bronzy color. It's not like too orangey um, or too reddy. Um, and I wanted to go quite lightly with the bronzer and slowly build up because the last thing you want is to look too orange on your wedding day. And you'll find when you put on your dress, obviously if you're going for a white dress, it instantly makes you look quite tanned anyway because you know we all know that white really brings out our tan or if you are tanned it, it does complement your tan basically what I'm trying to say is so if you go too harsh with the bronzer or with the fake tan it can look a bit too much against the white and then again with that Anastasia Beverly Hills contour kit I went in with a mixture of these two shades to contour just at the very top of my cheekbone like so and for um, highlighter I mixed two together so I firstly went in with the O oh Darling um, extra dimension skin finish because I wanted to look super super glowy then on top of that highlight um, I went in with my champagne pot highlighter because it, it was a little bit brighter and I just wanted to look really glowy so <laughs> I just hit that right on the high points just because I feel like highlighter completely changes your look in especially in photos just because the light will naturally hit your cheekbone 
and in photos like and with like shadows and that kind of thing it really really enhances your look in photography so I'd really recommend doing that whether you want to use a cream highlighter if you want something a little bit softer or you can go all out like me and whatever's left on my brush I just took it across my forehead when my natural oils come through that just makes it a little bit more nice and glowy and I like a glowy forehead but I do make sure I keep this bit nice and matte just so it doesn't look sweaty so I go it back in with my powder brush then of course as a bride you need to wear blusher I mean you don't need to but I am someone who is not a blusher person but for bridal looks and you know for photos and because you're wearing a white dress I just feel like you just need something to add back into the cheeks Ooh. oh I almost forgot this is like a massive step in any of my looks um, in, in my everyday makeup I always have to do this um, but I always like to in, um, highlight in the right in the inner corner so what I like to do is mix um, the shade nylon by MAC which is this one here and um, what I do is I grab my champagne pop and I just kind of blend the two together and I also do the exact same thing um, on my brow bone so I start with a little bit of nylon right at the highest point of my brow bone and you need the tiniest amount of this because a little bit goes such a long way and then back in with my champagne pop okay so for lips you want to go with something that you know is going to suit you um just something that you feel comfortable with because lipstick is such a personal choice whatever i go for isn't necessarily going to be what you love but yeah just go with something that you always kind of um stick with or if you're unsure then go see someone in like a makeup counter to give you some advice on what might suit you but you need to go in with one an open mind and also two you need to go in kind of having an understanding of what you like or what you want to go with also note as well that um, I love nude, I love peach and personally I feel like they suit me the best um, so that's what I went with firstly I dabbed on a little bit of the um, Into, no what's it called? To The Future um, lip cream this is a Pro Longwear lip cream by MAC it is old, it is discontinued but it was my wedding so not a tutorial um, no but I'm sure there's similar colours out there but I knew that this lasts ages so I just dab that on I didn't want too much because it is quite peach so I just dab it on almost as like a stain and I like to do this before my lip liner because it almost gives the lip liner like something to blend onto so then for lip liner I went in with Boldly Bare Lip Liner by MAC And then, so I did go in with quite a few products. And then I went in with Pure Zen. So Pure Zen, I've used a lot on my channel. And as you know, it is like my favourite lipstick ever. So why, when else would you wear your favourite lipstick ever? And it's going to be your wedding day. Because you know you love it and you know it suits you. So I know I love Pure Zen. And then just on the very centre, I just went in with a little bit of gloss. And I didn't go in with too much because I didn't want it to slide around. Yeah, that is basically my makeup that I wore on my wedding. It's pretty much exactly the same. But anyways, I really hope you liked the look. I'm going to go do my hair similar to how I had it. 
put a veil on or something for the photo but yeah that's basically the makeup finished I really hope you liked it hopefully you picked up some tips I did try to talk about a few um, tips and tricks for bridal makeup and anything that I found worked for me but mostly it was just to show you what products I used and how I used them so I really hope you liked the look please give this video a thumbs up if you did like it and please subscribe if you are new here so thank you again for watching and you'll see me in my next one